Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel, Dr. Siddiqui here. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most common skin diseases in the United States. Acne vulgaris is a common skin disease that involves the blockage and or inflammation of the pilosebaceous units. Pilo refers to the hair follicle and sebum is the oily substance that is produced by the accompanying glands that uh, this oily substance lubricates the skin and hair follicles. So acne is most commonly seen in the face, neck, chest, upper back, and shoulders. The reason the, that they are seen in these regions is because the, the, there is an abundance of um, the sebaceous glands in these areas. 80% of Americans are affected by acne vulgaris at some point during their lives. And of these 80%, 20% suffer from severe nodular cystic acne that can lead to permanent scarring. Acne can be divided into two categories, non-inflammatory lesions and inflammatory lesions. Non-inflammatory lesions consist of open or closed comedones, which is blackheads or white, white heads. Whenever the blockage is under the skin, this creates a, um, basically those dead skin cells uh, create that blockage and there's production, continued production of sebum. So this creates a lump under the skin. This is called a closed comedone and there's no inflammation yet. Um, whenever there is blockage on the surface of the skin, um, this is called an open comedone and there is a black discoloration and this is due to melanin interacting with oxygen to produce this black discoloration. It's actually not due to dirt. The inflammatory lesions consist of nodules, papules, and pustules. What causes acne? There are four main factors that can contribute to acne. This includes follicular epidermal hyperproliferation, which is a fancy term for irregular shedding of the dead skin cells. The other factors include overproduction of sebum or that oily substance, overgrowth of bacteria, and lastly, inflammation. Sebum production is regulated by hormones and other uh, factors such as uh, growth factor and insulin-like growth factor. So uh, hormones such as androgens can stimulate enlargement of the sebaceous glands and increase oil production. Um, this uh, promotes the overgrowth of the bacteria called P. acnes or propionobacterium acnes, which is normally found on the skin, but with overproduction of the sebum, it allows for a rich environment for these bacteria to grow. The bacteria secretes a uh, protein or an enzyme that breaks down the sebum. And this uh, releases inflammatory substances and chemotactic factors that um, allow for um, white blood cells to come to this area, uh, to this infected area, to fight these bacterial cells. So when the white cells um, come and fight off these, uh, these uh, bacteria, and when they die off, they combine with the uh, oil and the, the dead skin cells and form pus, and this is what creates that, those nodules and pustules. So those are the four main factors that can contribute to acne. What are risk factors for acne? Risk factors for acne include family history, hormones or changes in hormones, um, certain medications, stress, endocrine disorders, especially with increased androgen, um, as well as uh, friction or pressure on the skin. So let's talk about family history and the genetic predisposition to acne. Individuals who have parents or siblings with acne or severe acne are most more likely to have acne. They're at an increased risk. Um, hormones, uh, especially during puberty, um, there is uh, increased androgens, especially testosterone, that can stimulate these um, so the sebaceous glands to produce more oil and uh, predisposing them to more acne. Um, other states of hormone changes um, include during uh, pregnancy as well as um, when using oral contraceptive pills can affect um, acne. Certain medications can um, 
um, put you at an increased risk of developing acne. These include well, taking corticosteroids or even other types of steroids, including anabolic steroids. Um, other medications include lithium that, can, that is usually used for psychiatric conditions, um, such as bipolar disorder. And um, other medications, such as certain anti-epileptic medications, can cause um, uh, acne or can worsen acne. Um, other things, such as stress, um, so stress doesn't actually cause acne, stress makes acne worse. So the way it works is that these uh, sebaceous units are actually neuro and can act like neuroendocrine uh, glands and uh, when um, there is increased stress there is increased release of corticotropin releasing hormone and that stimulates the sebaceous glands to secrete more oil and uh, more sebum so there's more increased risk of um, developing acne. Um, uh, other things such as the endocrine um, disorders with increased androgens, you may see this in individuals with polycystic ovarian syndrome or even uh, congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Lastly, um, friction or pressure. Um, this can be from um, cell phone, uh, backpacks, headbands, um, even helmets that can cause uh, mechanical um, obstruction and um, mechanical blockage and lead to um, acne. Acne is a clinical diagnosis. Um, it can range from just comodonal acne to uh, all the way to severe uh, nodule cystic acne. So the other two are mild acne and moderate acne. Comodonal acne consists of just uh, the open and closed comodones. Um, the mild and moderate consists of both comodones and um, papules and pustules and then um, the uh, nodule cystic includes nodules that are greater than five millimeters and there is scarring involved. Treatment for acne can consist of pharmacotherapy, meaning medication, so non-pharmacotherapy, and then procedures. Pharmacotherapy or drugs include um, retinoids, topical retinoids, um, antibiotics, whether topical or oral antibiotics, benzoyl peroxide, salicylic acid, um, and other uh, things such as OCPs or selective androgen uh, receptor antagonists such as uh, spironolactone. Um, Non-pharmacotherapy, um, there's not much that involves non-pharmacotherapy. There have uh, some may suggest diet changes, however there is no strong evidence that uh, any certain diet can contribute to acne. And lastly, procedures. Um, there can be intralesional steroid injections, superficial chemical peels that use uh, glycolic acid or salicylic acid, as well as um, laser therapy um, and light therapy. So treatments for um, non-inflammatory nodules include topical retinoids, um, Basically, this is vitamin A derivatives, and um, there can be gel, uh, which can be used in individuals with oily skin, um, and creams are usually used in, for individuals with dry skin. Um, you can also use uh, other um, over-the-counter medications, including salicylic acid and as well as glycolic acid. Mild to moderate acne is usually treated with topical retinoids as well as topical antibiotics. Um, topical antibiotics um, in include erythromycin, um, clindamycin, daptomycin. Topical antibiotics uh, control the growth of the bacteria and decrease inflammation. Um, and usually um, combination therapy is a lot better than single using a single medication. So you could use topical uh, retinoids as well as topical antibiotics and uh, glycolic acid as well. Glycolic acid is usually used twice a day. Moderate to severe acne is treated with um, oral antibiotics. Oral antibiotics include um, uh, tetracycline, doxycycline, minocycline, as well as uh, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. And then oral uh, vitamin A, oral assay tretinone is usually used for um, nodule cystic acne. So in this video, we talked about one of the most common skin diseases in the United States, acne vulgaris. We talked about the different types, the non-inflammatory and inflammatory, the four main factors that contribute to acne, risk factors for acne, as well as uh, the diagnosis of acne and treatment. I hope you found this video helpful and informational. Um, if you have not subscribed, please be sure to subscribe and click on the links to watch my other videos and stay tuned for more great videos.